Hi, folks, and welcome to a very much delayed episode of Vintage Voltron. Uh, we did a lot of these last year, had a ton of fun, and Bernardo's just been so busy, we can't do another one without him. No, I'm kidding. That's probably me. It's my fault. Um, I've been very busy, but I am so happy to be joined by all my guests here. First off, um, from Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, the one and only Mark. Mark, thank you so much for joining. Hi. Okay. Yes. Just you got to check out his channel if, if you haven't already. He's also into painting as well. Mm -hmm. He likes to show off how creative he truly is. Like not only do I just collect games, but I can paint too really well. So thanks for showing me up in some of those videos. <laughs> that, cause I, I, I can draw the evolution of a stick man. That's about as far as my artistic development goes. Um, yeah, nothing to say. Okay. The, the next just guy, purely, what? purely you know, uh, practice, practice, Matt. Yeah, uh, you should see, I think I've told you my first time when I went to a painting th painting class, everyone did well except for me. I mean, the teacher just came and went, huh? And then, kept, well, keep trying. That was the only note she had for me because everything sucked. Um, Kindergarten class over there, man. I'm saying, and, and speaking of things that suck, folks, Bernardo's <laughs> the top <laughs> is with us. Welcome, Bernardo. Welcome. Hello, Volcar. He ain't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad to see Bernard on here. Of course, if folks, if you don't know Tabletop Island, you probably should. He comes. He he just recently did his top fifty vintage and current board games, and was telling me how hard it was. Do you feel that some of your games are looking at you dirty, like you didn't even talk about me? I thought you loved me. Is that what you hear from your games now that they didn't make since you just cut it to fifty and not a hundred? They taunt me while I sleep, so yeah. <laughs> that's a different problem. <laughs> um, we we also have Luke from Down from the Attic, another great oh. channel. Luke, Luke has production skills; he definitely showcases them off. Uh, got a, some of the things you need to watch: Ball Bearing Week, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Week is just boom. It's pinnacle of your channel right now. That was just you went all out for that. Yeah, that was that was a lot of work. Yeah, so well, it, it definitely there. paid off. And then, of course, he's been posting reviews here and there when he's not super busy fighting crime. That's what he does, if you don't know, folks. He dresses up and, you know, spandex, fights crime at night. Or, I don't know, goes out and parties. One of the two. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's fighting crime. I think that's you, Matt. <laughs> you tell us about Captain America last time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but definitely want to check out his channel. Now, my next guest doesn't have his own channel because he's too good for YouTube. He'll he'll guest star on other people's channels and, and grace them with his presence. Uh, you've seen him on the Dice Tower, the Dice Tower. OK, he's he's the pinnacle of my board game breakfast, Azrael, the retro board gamer. Thank you, sir. Hello. I'm so happy to see you again. It's been a while. It has been a while. How have you been? Uh, just hanging in there. You know, uh, the pandemic didn't slow me down. Working at a hospital, I still had to go to work, you know. Everybody yeah. else got to stay home, but I, like, you got to go to you. work. Not you. Not <laughs> you. The only essential worker, I think, of the group here who was plugging away at that. I don't know if we salute you or say thank you for your service now. I don't know how that works. <laughs> but um, thank, thank you for your service for reviewing vintage games. Sir. Yeah, not a problem. It's my duty and a privilege is what he says. All right, so, and then I'm the hack that sometimes reviews vintage games every once in a while when one of these guys, one of these guys convinced me to get it. I'm easily influenced. Um, even when they hoodwink me on terrible games like Hey Taxi. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and we, I thought today would be fun to talk about five affordable vintage games folks a lot of these vintage games that you love you want are hundreds of dollars you know you got people on ebay just selling it uh retro gamers talked about this in previous episodes before but it's just kind of been a while ebay is just kind of wild inflated market of board games but even on ebay there are games that are decently priced and secondhand retailers and whatnot that you may pass up because oh that's an older game it's probably not any good but actually, you need to give it a second look because these very affordable games are well worth your time. 
And I want to kick it off with who do I dislike the most? Bernardo. <laughs> what's, your, what's your what what's your first game? And by the way, I bet you anything we're gonna have some crossover here. Yeah. I, I bet you I'm gonna go ahead and call it. I'm feeling it. My first one's gonna be Dragon Strike. I love this game. Matt's a hater, so don't listen to him. Don't even watch his review for it. You got a dragon that's an electronic plate piece. Um, and you have these little explorer standees that you're moving around to collect these gems. You put them on top, it lays flat like a table. And at some point, if you roll a symbol on the die, you hit the button on the dragon and he whips his neck across the board hilariously and can knock the gem off. And their goal is to get two of one color to get the golden eggs to win the game. It's awesome. 15 to $20 still since I first got the game. I think I got the game for around $11. And it still remained cheap, even throughout as many reviews that have gone out for that game. I'm very impressed by that because it's a lot of fun and a really nice showpiece. <laughs> now, Luke, you also have this game and you love it as well, correct? Like that. You got it. <laughs> uh, this, he had it ready. <laughs> this was about 15 pounds. Uh, it was pretty cheap on eBay. Yeah. Um, Mark, do you have this game? I don't. Um, I probably will at some point, but uh, no, not yet. Retro gamer. I do have the game. Every game looks probably going to go. It's right here. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do. I have a, a working copy and a non-working copy. So yes, I do own that game. And, and folks, just to let you know, there is a reason this is cheap because you're going to roll that die where it's going to come face up to the green. It's the green side, right? And that's when you have to hit the dragon. Yeah, your gem will be knocked off throughout the entire game. This is that's the know, point. Yeah, a super Great. long game because yeah. gems are constantly being knocked out. You're never going to deliver them to the cave. It takes like forever. That's my problem. If maybe one side of that die was popping the dragon, but I'll be honest to Bernardo and everyone else's credit in here, my wife loves that game. Her family loves that. That's that. That is a game that always has to come out. Dragon Strike is a big winner. Uh, at the house. So even though it's not for me, definitely not for me, but it does have a neat mechanism. I do like the, it's, it's just a really those, silly game. Like, oh, it's hilarious. It it is, it is, it's back around on the table. It's just so stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if everyone remembers, it used to be, they used to be selling at fairs or whatnot. The little toy snake, it's a plastic little snake yeah. that, you know, you, you hold it by its tail and it can move and wriggle because it has different links that move and wriggle around that's exactly what the neck of this dragon is made out of so it makes it kind of zany on um, i like it when the his neck goes around and then unravels just swiping everything and to be honest, the whole time you're doing this the whole time yeah there it is just dang hold on, hold on. That's a 3D he needs right the 3d there. glasses there you go look at that <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to knock the camera down. That's, <laughs> falls down. That's the same. Hold on, hold on. Show that again. Show that one more time. So yeah, this you've is, got this is Bernardo looking for games over the end. Go for fits it. Fits into the motor and spins it around. So it's yeah. whipping around and doing all sorts of daft things. It's it's such a cool mechanism. Yeah. Not doing anything quite like that in a game. That's, that, that's what Bernardo's doing when he's searching the internet for foreign games. <laughs> that's Matt every time we drop a video. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you can try that out because there there are a lot of people who love Dragon Strike. Um, Mark, go for it. Um, well, I've only got one out of these five here, um, which is mm -hmm. from a company in Britain. So we have um, the benefit of actually being here. We can get this game cheap. Probably not going to get it cheap in the States, That's but nice. I had to go for at least one game from Waddington's. Um, this is probably the cheapest one from Waddington's that you can get. Uh, the Bigfoot game from 1987. Other Waddington's ones are probably more expensive, but this one you can get still between eight and 10 pound. And I just love the theme on this one, 1987. So it came out basically the same year that Harry and the Hendersons came out in order to tie in and cash in on that. And um, the artwork, the big 3D board, maybe not the best gameplay in the world, but the board, the pieces, the, the I want to say mm -hmm. yes. The Sasquatch. I just, I just love the 3D nature of this thing and flicking and rolling the boulders. 
love it. And they needed to get one Waddington game in here. No, I totally – and that's why you guys are on here because there are games that are going to be cheaper over in the U.K. than there would be here. And, and as Waddington games goes, that one and there's another one, I'm not going to mention it because so, someone else puts on this list, are relatively still cheap. You just have to pay a little bit more in shipping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still have faith in that game. Well, I didn't like it as much, and in my review, I talk about why. I haven't given up on it. I'm still working on some new rules for it. It but looks I'm, neat. It's It looks great. I like it. It's, I it's agree. I agree. Well, Waddington had quality pieces, man. Are you kidding me? Back in the day, any game from – if I, if I lived over there and Waddington games – or let's say Waddington games set up shop here, any of those games would have just I, – I would have loved as a kid. Yeah. So, no, they're, they're really, really nice. You know, Waddington stuff, the, the sculpts, the boards, the 3D nature of it all – just love all of that stuff with the vintage games and they've got it in pretty much 90 80 percent of the games that they produced their adventure games suck though <laughs> <laughs> each of the kingdom and dark world suck Ooh, but it looks so that. pretty it looks amazing oh, but it the kingdom suck. does suck. <laughs> That's a that is an awful game I cannot stand that game is it true that no it is true that uh you should know. Game. You interviewed him. Say what? You should know. You in- interviewed Justin. Yeah. I know. I interviewed him, but I think he did tell me that. <laughs> yeah, Key, uh, Key to the Kingdom is an upcoming title. They're still uh, they're still working on it right now. Yeah. I mean, cool. good luck. Good luck. Turn. I mean, they can't get any worse. I'll tell them that right now. No, it's a climb up <laughs> in it. You, you I just can't need get the board any worse to open up it. and close. That's it. That's all it needs to do. Do it. Any game, Candyland, just open up and close. We're good. I don't know. Just do something besides what they did. Make it horribly boring and a dreadful game. Not fun. Suck out all the – put in great components, great art. Make a great – you know, I like the mechanism where the board opens up into a bigger land. All those are cool concepts. But then deliver the flattest, most unimaginative gameplay ever, and you have Key to the Kingdom. Yeah. Roll, roll the dice to move forward. Roll the dice to defeat this monster. Roll the dice. Roll the roll dice. Check the book. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. I like roll rolling the dice. dice. This sounds like an amazing game now. You're making it sound good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll go ahead and give mine. Uh, one of mine that I see for super cheap all the time, I absolutely love, is called Battle Ball. Battle Ball is a two-player football game. It's a football of the future game. I, I can't remember when. I, I sure looked this up. I think it came out early 90s um, back in the day. And the miniatures look great. The football is actually a little metal die cast, futuristic football. And it is, you're rolling, it has different dice where different people can move different, uh, you know, big guys move slower, small guys move faster. But when you're rolling, when you meet each other, you get a, you get, they collide lowest roll wins so someone rolling a six-sided die even though they're slower if they can catch a guy who's rolling a uh, a 20 a d20 if they pass him by they have to fight he can't keep going they have to bump each other and if he doesn't you know d20 you're not going to roll lower than a six sometimes and so they may be out for that half or if you rolled a one they're out permanently from the game uh, i see this game for five bucks five dollars you can find it at vintage stores uh, flea markets yeah, they're just sitting there. There's tons of copies. I almost want to take the copies and repaint them, have a green and a yellow team too. I mean, it's just, I just absolutely love this game. It's so much fun. Whenever I bring it out, you know, it's two players, but um, it, it's there's so much fun. It's fast action. I think it goes two halves. You, you can go to overtime, a third round. Basically, you just keep running until you either you get into the end zone. So you can run it in there or throw it. Um, when I say football, I don't mean soccer. Now that I'm thinking about that, I have to I have to clarify that. Um, but I will be honest, it is a phenomenal game. I love it. It's always when I do my vintage list, it's always usually in my top five. And it's super cheap, super cheap. I don't know if anyone else is familiar with that game. Uh, I just picked up a copy of that from a car boot sale for a pound last week, actually. Um, um, but I mean, eBay over here, it's a 20 pound game in the UK. Really? Yeah. But see, all the miniatures and the dice alone make yeah. it a, a, a decent price for twenty bucks. But yeah. it, I, I, I like think people will, will use that for um, what's the game's workshop football game? The fantasy football. Yes, they'll use the pieces from that as a team. Yeah, 
I mean, it, they look great. And the miniatures are pre-painted too, I should say. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I, I just, I, there's nothing not to like about that game. I absolutely love it. Bernard, did you have that game? I do not. I, I remember Snob. seeing your review. <laughs> I do, I don't have a... Board game snob. He's seen the review and he still won't get it. He still won't get it, yeah. <laughs> there's another game, Luke, and I'm going to ask you about it later because I don't know. I mean, it was decently priced when I got it, but I don't know if it's a cheap game over in the UK, but uh, I think you may know what I'm talking about now. I may have spoiled it, but I'm just going to wait till everyone gives their five until I mention it. But uh, Azure Paul, what, 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 what's a game that's inexpensive that's fun? Okay, first, a couple of disclaimers. I um, very, I am easily amused, okay? So some of these might not be. I, I go, oh, that's so cool when somebody says, ah, that sucks, sucks, you know? So, And uh, all these games, the last time I checked, were all under $20. So all my games are, you should be able to pick them up for under yeah. 20 bucks. Um, my first game is uh, Heartthrob from uh, 1988. <laughs> it's an old Milton Bradley yeah. game. I mean, it was marketed for girls, but I've played it with a bunch of guys and it's just hilarious. It's just a way to uh, start uh, conversations. Uh, you start by uh, flipping up pictures of, of some guys and you rate to see who your friends are going to pick. Okay, Always so that's, yeah, travels. that's the, uh, and the guys, they're all in their 80s, you know, outfits and stuff. So uh, the second round, you start giving them characteristics. And then you see if your friends are going to pick the same people or pick different people, and then you score accordingly. So it's just this hilarious game of picking guys with a bunch of uh, cute guys with a bunch of different characteristics. I played this at Gen Con with Flip from Flip. With the Flip. It's one of Flip's favorite games. That is correct. That's who I played it with because Flip had showed me another game, and I was like, this is amazing. Can we, because he, he was, if anyone doesn't know Flip, he's a great guy. But if you don't know him, you think, who is this weirdo? Did they let a homeless person in? Should I give him money or food? I don't know. I feel sorry for him. But because when I first saw him, he was sitting there with McDonald's game out, just by himself with the little flags, no, notifying that, hey, I'm ready to play with someone. And he had a, he had a, like a little Superman cape on. It was purple. And he's just sitting here like this, like. I passed him by a few times like, you know what? This guy looks weird, but I'm going to sit by and play games with him. And I, I cannot tell, I, I, I couldn't leave him alone. I was like, bring out another one. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, and we played, I couldn't remember the name of the game, but we played Heartthrob and I could not tell you how much I laughed and cried and enjoyed that game. That's I'm fun. glad you, and I, I'm guessing you were preaching to the choir here because Bernardo started uh, smiling. Have you, you have Heartthrob? Yeah, that's gonna be in my slumber party kind of series. That game is like, yo, Travis, yo, they have a whole kind of campaign to find the real guy who played the real guy. Game. Yeah, it's hilarious. That's well, hilarious. Uh, Luke, Mark, I'm gonna go ahead and ask they, you. They they don't look amused. Not played it. <laughs> Not played it, but yeah, it would certainly go well with the uh, likes of. You know, Dream Phone and, and some of those more, oh, more expensive yeah, games I do have, yeah. I, I, I have some similar games like that, as well. I, I have a absolute blast. I don't know how cheap Ask Xander is. It's on my list, but Ask uh, Xander. It's, it's a pretty expensive one. It's up there with oh. Dream Phone. Oh, that's sad. Back when I got it, wasn't it wasn't Ask. But a lot of those games have risen in price, unfortunately. Because that's another game that's like... Um, does the guy at my school have a crush on me too or something? And you're like, what? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the two questions you can ask, but I'm always going to ask that one. Yeah, definitely. You, you know, know, we were talking recently about Dream Phone, and it's like we were saying like Milton Bradley really missed a trick. Like they, all you need to do is retheme it and re-record a few, you know, the dialogue and everything, and they could completely retheme that game as like a detective game where you're getting clues about like a crime or something. And, you know, it's... You're trying to deduce who the, the thief is or something like that, or it's a crime not knowing who, who has uh, a crush on you. Uh, no, <laughs> it's a, it's a, you're trying to find out who the killer is, but every once in a while the phone says, I know who it is, but I'm not telling. Uh, uh. 
I said, do you like scary movies? Oh, no. no. <laughs> my wife, I just recently, my buddy had an old copy of the game, cleaned it up, brought it to my house for my wife for, uh, for her birthday or Christmas or whatever. It was a late present. But anyway, uh, we played it. Whenever that guy came, I know who it is, but I'm not going to slam that phone down. <laughs> So irritating. Actually, really love, absolutely love it. But Heartthrob, I'm going to track that one down because I remember that, playing it with Flip. Man, he's a good guy. I need to get him on here. He, uh, did you, I, I think he's a professional clown. Is he real? I, oh, you can tell. I think so. But, but, but honestly, sitting at the same table with Flip, you cannot help but smile the entire time. He just lights up the yeah. table. He makes everything fun. Uh, you know, and, and that's what I love. People just play, and we've all talked about this in the past, but people just play for the fun of it. You know, I mean, yeah, we'd like to win, but at the same time, if we don't, we laugh and have a great, that's one thing I'm proud of my gaming group. We don't have anyone who's that competitive, you know, who gets, you know, table flips if they lose. Um, we all kind of sit back, laugh, congratulate, but, uh, flip is that to the T man. He just wants to have a good time. That's that's awesome. I'm glad you brought that one up. There you go. So I stand with you, sir, on Heartthrob. I didn't next, know it was cheap. Next oh, episode, we'll all come back with copies of Heartthrob and play it here live. <laughs> all right. Luke, what is your next one? Or okay, first, so excuse me. First one, first cheap game. Well, I don't know what it's like over you, over there, but I can't walk into a charity shop without seeing stacks of uh, Tornado Rex and Seance and you You're know, a liar. You're, such a liar. Like You're such a liar. You're actually giving them away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> On my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, cheap game. First, first one for me is Flix. Um, this game is fantastic. It's one I've had since maybe about eight years old, but I regularly see it going on eBay for around about six or seven pounds. And it's a really fun game. You have 3D plastic board, two-player game, dexterity. You're using these little paddles to flick marbles around the board. They've got like these um, inverted pyramids that you've got to land the balls in. And you've got to make um, a triangle with four balls. And it's really simple. The game plays really quick as well. A round's only maybe about five minutes. And like I said, it's a really cheap game to play. Um, it's solid built as well. Um, like I said, all the pieces are plastic um so yeah it's it's an obscure one and it's really cheap to get it's, and it's worth picking up awesome awesome you've done a review of that on your channel correct oh yeah years ago um yeah yeah but um it's one that gets brought out <clears throat> quite regular um like these ones here because the attic hatch is like right there these are the go-to ones these are the ones that get grabbed and played the most so it being in this stack yeah it's it's regularly played. Awesome. Awesome. Good pick. Uh, <laughs> we'll switch this up this round. We'll go with Mark. Mark, what's your second pick? Second pick. Um, I'm going to go for uh, one which I have reviewed already, and I know Bernardo picked up a copy of this. But for Action Attraction by Tommy from 1995. Um, and this one, basically, you've got – I can't do this on camera. Uh, you've got your – board here which has got kind of dimples in it and this one actually goes up to like eight players yeah you can have eight players on this game um and basically you've got your kind of plastic marbles but they've got magnets inside them and you've basically just got to put the the balls with the magnets inside them anywhere on the board and try and get down all of your um balls to get rid of them but what will happen is if you're not careful, if you don't put them in the right place or if you're not delicate doing it, then they will attract each other. And sometimes you, they just go <laughs> and you get a huge big chain of balls. And if any stick together, you have to take them so that you keep playing with those. So it can be a really fun, um, good laugh, this one. Um Again, it's one of these ones, it's kind of very, very light strategy, I suppose. Um, and it's quite slow up until the minute that you put one down and it goes, <laughs> and then it suddenly changes. 
and, uh, yeah, it's good fun. And there's again, another, there's a children's game called Rattlesnake. That's, I think, very similar. That it's these magnets, I think, and and if you watch, don't watch out, they're all snapped together. Okay. <clears throat> um, I mean, that one you can get even today for between two pound and ten pound. It's a really cheap game on eBay, but yeah, it's really good fun. Awesome. It's one awesome. I've been meaning to pick up. It's yeah. Amazing. No. Excuse. I uh, I found one at a thrift store one time and. Uh, it was a thrift store that's very uh, adamant about you not opening the boxes. They like tape every side. So I get home, I open the box, and they're just regular marbles inside. I'm all, what is this? <laughs> so I just have the board with a bunch of regular marbles. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to look now. for another one. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> oh, that sucks. So if anyone has some magnets, yeah. <laughs> magnet balls, I know where you can send them, folks. I know where you can send them. Um, you have a lot of those, uh, you did that, uh, not ball bearing game. You know what I mean? The, uh, weighted, uh, metal balls, the balancing one. Uh, Yali. Yeah. Someone yeah. left a crude comment in, in the comments. I remember. Um, Is his name Matt Wilkins? I don't know, but I'm just saying that, you know, <laughs> I, the whole time I'm sitting here just get, I didn't know what, what, you know, five-year-old joke I wanted to put in the comments about that, but that was interesting. Yeah. So you haven't and done a review on ball. this one though. <laughs> Have you? What's have you sorry? reviewed that? Have you reviewed that game before on your channel? Action Attraction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's a review up for that. Okay. I have to remember there. Yeah. This. 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 I was... I, I'm trying to point in the right direction here. <laughs> that way. Right. Um, Azure Ball, go ahead. What's your next pick? Okay. Uh, my next pick is Bionic Crisis from 1975, a Parker Brothers game uh, based off of uh, the Bionic, the $6 million man. It's one of the funner, excuse me, the, it's one of the more enjoyable Bionic games. Uh, you have a, a little board that represents the Bionic man's uh, circuit, and you have to make it from uh, one point to the other point using pegs to create the circuit to, to fix the Bionic Man first. So it's really, it's an interesting game. It's really fun, too. Cool. What's it called again? Bionic Crisis. Bionic Crisis. I've seen it. I've never, I didn't know anything about it. The box, the edging I could only see because it was low on a stack at a local shop. But I might look at that. I might look into that. That's cool. Please do. Yeah. Snake that one out there. There you Bernardo. go. All right, so Bernardo wants to talk, so I'll let him pick his next one. All right. My next one is a good one. I was just going to pause. Um, it's 13 Dead End Drive. $20, my friends. They they just did an anniversary edition. It's at Barnes & Noble. Still, I see it like every time I go there. I love seeing that game there. I'm so happy they reprinted it. Would I have liked more upgraded components on some of the joints and stuff? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The game's extremely enjoyable. It's a game where you have these cards of characters that um, are individuals that you want to try to win the inheritance. How do they win? There is a frame in kind of the center of the mansion that has their kind of painting, right? This is the person who inherits all the money. If you can have your character on the painting and move, remove them from the building, you win the game. Or if the um, kind of cop kind of goes up to the door and your painting's at um, kind of face front for one of your characters that's still alive, then you win, and yes, alive, because there's cool traps that can fall down and get rid of your opponents. You can move any character on the board. It is a lot of fun. I love that game. <laughs> there's another person just sitting below you here in the chat who would agree with that pick. Luke. Yeah, I agree with it, too. Oh, oh, there's two people. Oh, yeah. Downstairs. I, like, I like 13 Dead and Drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, one of the family's yeah. favorites. Mark, you got that one? Uh, yeah, I've got that one too. Again, unfortunately, over here, that's about 25, 30 pounds for that one. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like I said, the prices are going to differ no matter where we're from, I guess. Yeah. I think about um, 25 for mine, yeah. Yeah. Luke, go ahead. What's your next pick? Okay. So um, this is, again, I've only had about a year or so, and I bought this, I think, maybe about <clears throat> eight pounds. And. I would have paid double for it. It's that good of a game. It's Bermuda Triangle. And it's one of these games which is so overlooked. Like, it's one of those games where I don't know if you guys are the same as me that 
if you find the game on eBay and go, oh, what's that? You'll go on um, Board Game Geek and have a look through and look at pictures and reviews. And I had a look at the pictures for this game, and I was like, oh, man, that game looks like straight trash. Like, they, <laughs> <laughs> the components look, like, so bad. Um, but Norm from Board Game uh, Museum recommended it really strongly and said, so I found it really cheap. I thought, you know what? Go on, I'll buy it. It's fantastic. Like, it's got this fantastic storm mechanism in the middle of the board that's um, directed by a compass. So you spin the needle of the compass, and it tells you how many spaces the storm's going to move and how far it's going to spin around. And on the underside of that storm is magnets that will scoop up your ships. And you're trying to keep your ships away from the storm as much as possible. So... Um, it's a real battle, and when that thing's creeping closer to you, it gets tense. It'll block off routes, and you can't move forward. And you're like, "Come on, go away!" You know, <laughs> 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 you're looking for it to move to the other side of the board, but it keeps creeping closer and closer. And you know, you're sweating at that point. You know, you're down to one ship, and you're wanting to keep playing. No, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this game massively, massively underrated, um, and for that reason, it is still very very cheap um it's one of my top 10 favorite vintage games um it's i think once people caught on caught on to how good that game is i can see that going up in in value i, I really can we did our top 50 vintage games together late last year bernardo you also had this near your top right back then yeah it was funny because luke had brought up he was like hey Bernardo, have you ever heard of Bermuda Triangle? And I'm like looking at the bottom of my stack, like, yeah, I've had it for a while. And he was like, well, you need to play it. And I was like, uh, you know, I was looking at it again. I was like, all right, let's play it. We, yeah, it was the funniest thing. Cause like you think like you're in a dock to get like different amounts of money and you think you're safe and the storm just will roll across and just get you. And it can only just get one of you and leave the other one there. That's more. The game's frustrating, and I love it for that reason. As There's no state safe spaces on that <laughs> board at all. That's <laughs> great. I, I just recently picked up a copy this week. You're going to love it. I, I, well, I'm sure I am. It, and I, I will echo Luke's thoughts. It looks extremely dull and drab when you're just looking at pictures. But from what these two guys, and actually you guys put it on my uh, – well, I know Norm always loved it, but I was like, I don't know. And then when you guys were like – putting it high on your list. I was like, really? Well, give this another look. Look, see there. Um, okay, so my next one is a 3M game, and it's an, exp it's an inexpensive 3M game. There aren't that many of them. There's a few you can get for dirt cheap, and <clears throat> uh, Mr. President is one of those. I love Mr. President. You can, uh, you're basically the box turns into, it's, it's a ballot box. You open up the box, put the things in there, and suddenly you're shooting cards into one of the four areas of the U.S. and basically casting a ballot. Now, even though you're going in that region, we don't know which state, because a, a state from er every different region is on your card. So whichever pilot goes into, that's where you cast your votes. So it's like, almost like you're secretly casting votes. Now, there's a few other things you can do besides just cast votes, obviously. Fundraise, advertise, it gives you little points. You have these little... Uh, dry erase boards that, and I love that. They didn't use the scratch pads, which uh, thank goodness. Um, the dry erase boards, you can just wipe right over them and you reuse them again. <clears throat> but it's it's an incredibly fun game. Uh, it gets played more every four years, <laughs> obviously, in my, in my gaming group. So it was very high, but constantly on my list, it's always high. I have two uh, election board games I really love. The old Campaign Trail by GDW, which it has pathetic pieces, and they were even more pathetic rules. I mean, it was just terribly thought out, terribly underproduced game, but it's fun. But uh, Mr. President, for me, is my and it's my only 3M game I have left in my uh, collection now because it's just that good. I don't know if anyone else has played that one or know anything about it. No. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I didn't talk about it, Matt, but I've not played it. I'm glad my taste greatly differs from everyone else's here. But I, I just love that game. It's just such a fun. I mean, obviously, in the UK, you guys would be like, I, I don't get this. This is weird. But for me, we just and when I bring it out, my friends are like, because it looks kind of boring. It's just a ballot box is what the box turns into. But when they and then the best part and people think this is the worst part is having to count out the cards and tally up the scores in each one of the 50 states. 
No, man, that's where the game sinks. If you're waiting for the results and you're seeing how many electoral votes you got from someone else and you, they really beat you in the East. But don't worry, in the South and the Midwest, you caught up. And now it's getting close and or maybe someone's pulling away, but you have California in your pocket and you didn't tell them. That's worth tons of points there. I don't know. There's just something about that game that I absolutely love. Absolutely love it. Super cheap, too. So, Mr. Pre El Presidente. There you go. Um, uh, as you follow, we'll let you go with your third pick. All right. Uh, third pick is Shadow Lord from 1983 by Parker Brothers. Definitely one of their more harder games out there for the time. Uh, Shadow Lord is a game where you take part in, uh, you're one of the elements, air, uh, land, sea, um, and you go out and it's weird because it's like fantasy mixed with science fiction. The characters are. Um, you're out in space and it's, it's an area control game. You start with... Uh, I believe it's two uh, diplomats and you go out and you're trying to recruit other people. And there's also a way to uh, battle people. It's just basically laying down cards. It's like war. And then you roll like an eight sided die. It's not a six sided. It's an eight sided die. So it's uh, for the time, it was a really difficult game. Uh, Shadow Lord, Parker Brothers, 1983. Did you have this growing up? I did. Oh, see, that's, that's a game cool. I would have played the heck out of when I was a kid, if I was a kid. And it's Designers super cheap. Wow. Today, even super cheap. All right, there you go, yeah. yeah. I, I think, didn't Norm do a review on that? I probably. I, I've seen I've seen a review of it online. I can't remember who did it, though. But, yeah, no, definitely interesting. And it, the, the art is neat, too. It looks yeah. cool. I, I'd never seen it. I was just looking at it now. Same designer as Dune, Dune, too. Wow. Same designer as what? Dune. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah. All right. Um, Luke is looking at, you know, either the game or getting text from the ladies. I don't know which one. He never. No, I, was, I was checking up uh, Dragon Lord. Oh, yeah. T check it out. You should. Listen to this man. He just bought yeah, me was, here on his game. I was pick. just looking at it on my phone. It looks it looks nice. The art's nice to it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Luke, Luke, go ahead. Give us your number three pick. Number three. Well, it, number three is the the game I've most recently reviewed on my channel. It's Stay Alive. And this is a game I see regularly at ch charity shops. Yep. Um I picked up my copy for I think two pounds. And uh, again, it's a really quick vintage like i mean this game stems from 1965 and they're still making it but that i mean that just tells you how many copies are out there there, there must be thousands and thousands so you chances are you're going to stumble across one in a charity shop sometime and yeah really cheap uh quick game to play games around about five minutes yeah you, you got this plastic board and you've got each got five marbles each and you land them on the board however you want and there's a bunch of little levers at the side of the board which move the positions of holes in the board. Uh, and there's safe spaces and there's the holes. So when you move the lever, um, what were safe spaces moved to be holes and what were holes moved to be safe spaces. So you're trying to land uh, your opponents down in the holes and protect your own uh, ball bearings at the same time. And it's, it's a nice light strategy game. Um, you kind of... The other thing as well is that um, the... Um, player after you can't move the uh, lever you just moved. So tactfully, you can move levers you know they're going to touch to try and sink you and prevent them from doing that. There's there's a little bit of forward thinking with it, but it's a fun little game. It's definitely worth it's worth two pounds, you know. So so there you go, Ashval. You can you can use your extra marbles for yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I love it how you guys call it charity shops over there. You know, I love it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, over here we call them thrift stores. Yeah. That's right. Car boot sales. That was that's gonna <laughs> turn me off a lot. Oh boot sales are fantastic. Um it, by the way, in that video, is that your dad you're playing with? Yeah. That's awesome. I love after it's done, he kind of shakes his head, does the whole handshake. I was like, yeah. oh isn't that nice? My <laughs> dad won't ever play a game with me. Players. They know dang right there. Like, you'll get that out of here in real life. <laughs> Yeah, my dad would look at the game going, um, I'm watching the game right now. I'm not 
playing. A I'm game. doing real manly things. <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch the game and eat raw meat. You know, <laughs> it doesn't do that. <laughs> but, uh, you should get him to play heartthrob. <laughs> <laughs> Please get your dad to play heartthrob with you. I just I think plays more madness and he loves that. So. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good pick. Good pick. Uh, let's go. Mark, what's your pick? Uh, pick? I actually did consider putting that one on myself. Um, but I mean, when I think of cheap vintage games, I automatically go to, you know, in my head, two player abstract strategy games. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat slightly here. I'm going to put three games for one slot. Um, I'm going to say, Isolation, Trespass, Blockade, they're all, these were released by um, Action GT over here in the UK. They were released by Lakeside in the US, uh, 1978. This one is, the other ones are 1979, um, just slightly later. Um, this one, Isolation, I have reviewed on my channel. It is probably my favorite of the three, but really they are very much, they are very similar. They've got a very similar style to them, um, but they're really just nice, nice two-player strategy games. This one, Isolation, I would say is probably my favorite. Um, and in it, basically, you move around the board um, just one space in any direction, starting from the home space. And um, any time you move, you move one space, and then you use your finger to punch one of the yellow tiles out of existence, um, which means that the other player can't go on to that space. And basically, you just keep moving around the board um, until one of you can't move anymore. So it's really, really, really simple. Um, and in fact, I've got, I'm, I'm a primary school teacher, and I've got a class of eight-year-olds. Um, and I didn't play that with them, but basically, I just drew out this exact same thing on a piece of paper and got them to score out um, boxes they absolutely loved it they just moved around with cubes scoring out boxes and they just it's really really quick game um but obviously it is a strategy one it's not a tough heavy strategy one to be honest i really don't like strategy games or any kind of game to be perfectly honest where you've got lots of different things to keep in mind and you've got little bits of cardboard everywhere and there's all these different mitigations of just give me a thing that I can focus on and go right this is what I'm doing this is what I need to focus on this is how I win the game and uh, those those are good for that they're really simple strategy games um but they're good fun Mark avoid the name Yui Rosenberg whenever you see him then <laughs> okay. I mean every Euro games there are tons of pieces and cardboard that you have to keep up with in those games um everyone's a big fan uh, <clears throat> my number three, my number three, and Bernardo, I haven't gotten to you either, right? No. Yeah. Okay, good. Cause you're going last here. eBay, eBay, the board game, the electronic board game, eBay, it is stinking cheap online to get. It is worth it a million times over it. You're, you're throwing these cards down, of course, trying to outbid other people. You don't know the electronic game will automatically end the bid at this. And you're trying to get set collection because that's going to increase the value of your cards. Plus, there's something called uh, estimated value. That's the cards face down. And when you flip them over, it says actual value. A lot of the, all the cards look the same. Some of the cards look the same on the back, on uh, front. But on the back, they're either worth more, the same, or less. So you don't know when I'm grabbing this sword if it's going to be worth that amount or less or more than the actual value. So that can even... Uh, give some mystery on who's going to win here. But you're trying. Whenever you win with a card, you have to eliminate that card from your deck. So you just can't bid the highest card every time to win, right? And sometimes you will. You're trying. You're, so the game is very thematic in that you're trying to win with the low cards, so that later on you can dominate with the bigger bids. <clears throat> and like I said, it's such a fun game. Really cheap to get. Absolutely love eBay, the board game. You know, um, the, the thrift stores, they're, they're like Trigo Pursuit. There's tons of them. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're oh, dead. Every yeah. yeah. You can get it for a couple of bucks at a thrift store easily. And it's it's well worth it every time. Mm -hmm. um, just just don't press a button by accident because it will it will stay on for the next five minutes asking, put your players in players ready. It'll keep talking every time I move it on, on the shelf. I accidentally press the button. I hear it talking for the next few minutes. <laughs> It really so wants take to be the played. batteries out, people. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I have to take, put it in, put them back out. Um, anyway, <laughs> it reminds me of a story, but later on, uh, I played a vintage game just recently where the batteries died on us during the game. Oh. <laughs> it was yeah. great because it was Legends of Zagor. And he's like, who dares challenge me? And you type it in. He goes, fight. Ting, 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 ting. And he goes, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> and then I, I hit it again. He goes, and then just finally just dies out. And I realized I went, Oh, the batteries died. And they looked at me and said, What's that mean? I went, It means we won. Every time I play Dark Tower, I always put fresh batteries in because those suck out so much power. Like by the end of the game, the batteries are gone. Yeah. Like time to get those big humongous D batteries. Yeah, because this one uh, is always on, too. It doesn't just come on when you interact with it. It's always on doing a thunderstorm, lightning. And every once in a while, Zagor will come in and challenge someone. So it's always on whenever you play. And the games can be an hour or so. So I, I should have thought about that. But that was so funny when he died like halfway into the game. I was like, guess we won. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, go ahead, Bernardo. What's your number three? Number three is going to be vampire hunter game um this is a game you can still get for about 15 to 20 dollars on ebay it's a game you play in the dark you turn the light on um day is red and it show um you move around the <clears throat> to try to defeat um dracula and there's cards that can change um from day to night and when it goes night you hit the button on the tower it changes to a blue light and it changes the look of the board it's so cool that like hitting the switch can change it and i know i've talked about it a number of times here but I even went as far as getting like 3D glasses and just replacing it to all red lenses or all blue lenses if you wanted to play it in the daylight or if you needed a little more lighting because your vision's a little. Does impaired. uh? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but does that work? Yeah, yeah, I have a video on it too. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. If you don't have the greatest of vision, I think that's a way to still play it because I know that's that a might smart. Be a I told you that was a smart way to come across that problem. Even though I like a game that you can play in the dark. Yeah, me too. It's cool. Yeah, I mean that was gonna be that was gonna be on my list as well. Uh, I I picked up my copy for twelve quid, which is really cheap. Uh, that I was I was yeah, toying yeah, no. that that was uh, like my number six game, you know. Whoa! So there's our first almost almost almost. Luke, Luke, you'll go ahead and start with number four. Just add on to whatever you were gonna say about Vampire Hunter that Bernardo skip. Oh no, it's fine. I can pick another game. <laughs> Oh, you got plenty others? Okay, go ahead. Pick us another one. Pick us number four then. Again, I'm noticing a trend with uh, both mine and Mark's in that, that we're picking a lot of two-player abstract strategy games. And uh, my third one is Downfall. It's mm -hmm. another two-player game. You know, yeah. it's been around for donkey's years. You turn the dial and you move the little tokens down with the wheels, trying to get them to the bottom in sequence. I see this all the time in charity shops, um, and it, well, it's potluck whether you're going to get one with all the pieces. But if you do, you know, it's three quid well spent. You know, <laughs> it's a fun little game. Um, I, I remember playing this round at my grandma's, and uh, I'm glad to have my copy still. You know, it's it's a fun, quick again, and it's, it's another one which is over and done with within five minutes. So I, I'm wondering whether like longer board games are the ones that have a bigger, bigger monetary value and like these short play quick games are the ones which are cheap and getting thrown out, you know. Well, that's what I think when I was thinking about it, it seems to be that the games with a theme are more expensive. The abstract yeah. ones, people seem to overlook them and they're really, really dirt cheap. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of those Milton Bradley ones, they're all just bare pl plastic primary colours. You know, um, there's not a great deal of visual uh, stimulant there. You know, not like a board game. Like, you, you land something like, uh, even though the game's trash, um, 
like Curse of the Idol with the 3D board and the temple and everything. And it's beautifully, it's hand painted and it looks amazing. Like, wow, someone spent some time making this. And then you land plastic tray with ball bearings. It's like, uh, it doesn't quite look as good. But the game is still a lot of fun, you know. So, uh, yeah. It's yeah, the designers work real good on the look of Curse of the Idol. Unfortunately, designing the actual gameplay. There's no. still a game there. I like it. There's still a game there. It's called Annoying, the game of annoyance. I have I seen like that, game, that, so that what, game is creeping up in value. I know. Trade value for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Um uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and say one. I'll go ahead and say my number four before I'm, I'm shocked. No one said this one yet. And I've waited long enough. I've been sitting on it. Uh, but if folks, if you're keep passing, cause this is at flip, uh, thrift stores, charity stores, I'm sure flea markets every, we can get for super cheap anywhere, even online labyrinth. What a game, what a game it's been around for years. It's, it was at one time. I mean, it's still considered a mass market game unbelievably good unbelievably good I, I don't know what version you play luke has the nice little winding version that Master and he's going to get someday um but every time i play that game i love it even more it keeps climbing up my vintage list when i make my list every year because it's just such a smart game pushing tiles over the board creating that maze labyrinth theme trying to get to that icon then grabbing the next card and going Oh crap! I was just at the symbol with the dingbat, you know, four turns ago. Now I got to find where he was and go back and get him. I think that game is great, and anyone passing this game up just because it's a oh, that's just an old, you know, mass market is probably not that good. You're doing yourself a disservice. It's a phenomenal game. Agreed. Such a simple mechanism as well, and it works beautifully. Yeah, it does. It really does. It. I agree. All right, so Mark, go ahead. What's your number four? Uh, next one then is I'm gonna go from 1990. Um, Vendetta here. This is the 1990 Parker version. There is an older 1987 um, version released by Elfin. Absolutely beautiful uh, artwork on this one. Um, this is Chicago gangsters and mobsters, and uh, basically what you're doing is moving. Your godfather has to get go out all the way around the board and back into his home base to prove um, that he has got the biggest ball bearings. Uh, so <laughs> you need to get a bit around. <laughs> and um, basically that's it. But if somebody else lands on the same um, space as you, they can uh, capture you, take you hostage. So you've got to try and move some of your other pieces around in order to um, protect him as bodyguards. And you've just got this really fun spinner piece in the middle, which uh, is really nicely themed with the uh, the old cars with the drive-by shooters in it. And if that lands, gets spun and lands on anybody, um, then they get knocked out. So there's quite a lot of strategy involved in this one. Um, you have to really think about how you're going to protect your men, doubling them up. But obviously, that takes a lot longer. Whereas if you just move your men straight away, you can get much, much faster. I mean, I played that with my wife at one point and she just decided just to move her godfather around and not bother with any protection and having to wait to move them on. She got all the way around into one space away. And then I put somebody else on there and she got um, held hostage and she was there until she got killed and she had to go right back to the start again. So oh, no. it's not this sleeping on the couch that night. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. When you showed that game, it, it's called, what's it called here in the States? Vendetta. No, it's not. It's called something else. I thought. Anyway, it, either way, I looked it up. I, I told I told Bernardo. I said, you know what? I bet Mark just sits there and smiles and goes, ha, ha, ha. they didn't know about that game. I'd never heard about that game, but I agree, it's really nice, really <laughs> nice game, really fun looking game. And by the way, thank you for being the only one to come prepare and actually have your board games with you. I just totally didn't think like that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to go digging through there, so I. I know. I, I know. I, I should have, you know. 
<laughs> then I could have the big, you know, the big picture of myself on the. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm going to get. You know what? You're going next. You're getting the big picture now. Give me a big picture. So go for it. What's number four? All right. Number four is uh, a game that came out about the same time that uh, Top Gun came out. They probably should have just called it Top Gun and it would have been okay. Uh, Screaming Eagles, 1987 by Milton Bradley. Uh, it's kind of, uh, well, not kind of, it's you're in a fighter plane and flying through the air trying to get behind your opponent strategically and fire missiles or shoot your machine guns before you get shot down. And the board, it's an interesting mechanic where the board is just like a never-ending airway. You'll mm -hmm. come out one end of the board and then come out at the other end, the back of the board, to try to get behind the other player and shoot them down. It's great fun. Uh, probably one of the more expensive games that are on this list. But, you know, a little over 20 bucks. That's Screaming Eagles. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't – Milton Bradley reprint those as far as their air command strike command. Yes, they did. Yeah. The land, uh, the land, land sea, sea air. air. Yeah. Cause I know tank battle was reprinted under that mission command series. Yeah, and mission command. It's a, it's a much better version than the old seventies. I have the old seventies version, but when I saw the early nineties verse, like, ah, it looks nice. And then Screaming Eagles was another one that got reprinted. So, I mean, that version may be cheap, too. But you can still find Screaming Eagles uh, yeah. in flea markets and whatever. I, the one that I found wasn't complete, so I didn't pick it up. But um, that that does look like a nice game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Way more in, involved than a vintage game you think would be back then, too. A lot of, a lot of good strategy in there. And the box it, art that thing is just phenomenal. It looks so gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. You you play the Top Gun theme song when you bring it down yeah, from you yourself. Da, na, 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 na. Yeah, just, you know that's that's how you play it. All right. So number who haven't I had go? Mark, I haven't had you go. No, I have had you go with four. Who hasn't done four? Has everyone done four now? You always I think, every, I, think every, I think everyone's done four now. All right, Bernardo, Auto. number four. <laughs> My number four, I'm tired of waiting because I feel like this is going to be a crossover loop, but this is cheap. Tilt and Tumble, man. It is a dexterity game that has this well-balanced device, as I call it, where you have these weighted chips that you are moving from the bottom to the top, or from, yeah, bottom to top in order to not have it to both. So you, each chip has different weights. You only die to get specific ones. It is awesome. Your dog can play it just like the box shows. It's awesome. Yeah, See, the, 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 the two UK guys are so uh, they're, they're ready to go with their boxes, you know. I'm saying they're ready to go, and I like how you're doing the old Vanna White here, just presenting the box while while Bernardo's talking about all the features here. That, like, that's that's just easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> this tilt and tumble box comes with two players, where you do several discs like, and, like and a lifetime of fun guaranteed. Agreed, Don Bernardo. This game is it's superb. There's so many people who have never heard of this game, and every single one of them who've played it have loved it. And that's gotten a reprint here. I think it's cheap in the U.S. too. You can get reprinted versions of that game really cheap. It's new, yeah. It's, it's they've yeah. It's it's in stores right now. It's crazy. I think it's an excellent game. Yeah, I believe right now. All right, right now. I can't believe that. All right, so I'm going to let you do back to back. Give us number five, Bernardo. Hulk smash. Play-Doh board game. It is still cheap. You can get that one, the Godzilla one, if you're Matt Wilkins. It doesn't matter. They're both the same game, but they have just different smush components. You get this nice kind of tank, which is the one you probably always want, but you also got a car, a helicopter, or a jet. No, it's, it's, a, it's a plane. Never get the plane. You get it is. It is just a hilariously fun game. You're moving through. You're drawing cards. Um, there is certain kind of colors on each tile that you can smash. So you can smash every car in that color, which is just fun. And whenever it's smushed, much like Splat, which kind of started the trend as to you skip over that space moving forward to make the game move quicker over time. It is a lot of fun. You do a lot of smash in with the Hulk when you get this little fist, green fist that you can come down and punch the board. If you get the Godzilla, you get a little standee with the Godzilla foot. I love having them both. It is an excellent game, and it's one of the cheaper Play-Doh board games. I, you know I mean? I, that no joke. That was my number six. 
because <laughs> Godzilla gives you the little feet stomp. You, there's two, you can get two feet stomped on your that's and it's it's great. It's great. Also, it speeds the game up the more people get stomped because you skip over those spaces going mm -hmm. forward. And so it, it, it kind of brings it doesn't the game doesn't overstay its welcome, but it's extremely fun. You should only use the tank, maybe the van every once in a while and the car, but never the airplane. That thing is so weak and flimsy. Use the tank every time. Get a good smush in there. Not not a, not a Hulk fist, folks. Get 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 the Godzilla stamp. Stomp. It's so you don't good. want to give them something good to smush. Make the plane. That's right. They, Make don't it a deserve, tank. they don't deserve a good action. But you're right. That is that is a great game and pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to do Azure Fall. What's your number five? My number five is Clue, the Great Museum Caper from 1991, Parker Brothers. Uh, it's set in the Clue universe uh, where one person is trying to secretly steal paintings from museum while the other players are trying to capture the guy and it's got hidden movement uh you strategically place these cameras with motion detectors that go off when the when the guy that's trying to steal the paintings goes by and it's one that i see all the time at thrift stores and you know everybody seems to pass it by because they probably say oh clue you know but it's not yeah. really clue but it's just set in the clue universe I want to say I'm one of those people for the longest because I hate Clue. I hate Clue. I know your Clue story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally dumb. Yeah, the one time I won, folks, I, I just went to the center, guessed, and got it right and ruined the game for everyone. I was seriously going to guess just so I could get out and go do something else. I didn't want to play, but I just happened to get the – it'll never happen again. I was like, shut up. I said, like, well, let's play another one. Everyone was pissed. <laughs> Fastest game of Clue that ever went, but I can't stand that game. But Museum Caper, you've done a review on that, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I've yeah. showcased it before on, on uh, I think it was Board Game Blender. Yeah, I, because I, I saw that was the first time you were the one to change them. I was like, oh, that's a lot different. That game is not cheap over here. No, really? just, this is the problem. Look, they, they've just got all these board games that are really expensive over here, and they're just lying around, scattered everywhere over there in the U.S. Oh yeah, we 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 use the extra copies to take a dump on sometimes here in the U.S. They're just they're just so. Sometimes you just gotta throw them out for overcrowding. <laughs> we we, we want to build up our landfill. We just throw a few more of those games, or yeah, if we want to keep the fire going. going wipe my feet on copies of key to the kingdom you know <laughs> hey, i'd wipe my feet on keys of the kingdom any day regardless of what the price is on that game M most overpriced games we should do that one next um all right uh i'll go ahead and get my fifth one out here the game is called bumper cars um bumper cars uh i believe it was parker brothers and it is the is a great game where you're moving these cars Rolling two die, one die is moving, you know, maybe roll a four and a three, one's moving, one car's moving four, one car's moving three. You can bump other cars. If you land on another car, you usually bump them all the way down unless it's on their own color. That's their safe space. Uh, but the parking lot and a lot of the spaces in on the board are all in gray, which means you're not safe, especially when it gets to the parking lot. So you'll be bumping into people. You have to land there by exact count, but you'll be bumping into people, sending them all the way back. They have to get exact rolls to park their car. If every this is the old game where if every roll doubles, you get to go again. So it's always fun rolling doubles uh, to get to go again. But I've had this game for uh, this is the same game that one of the few games in my collection that I had from when I was a kid that I have today because it was it was my grandmother's game we used to play. And when she passed away, my brother's like, hey, I think my brother would like to have this game. He called me up. I was like, yes. I want that game. And I played that game several times. I brought that out to my adult gaming group. Um, it is an absolute blast to play. And it's still cheap online. Bumper cars. Unbelievable. I just picked that up last week. I found it. Um, my uh, The guy that owns my local game store is cleaning out his garage. And he, he sold it to me for three bucks. You know, I said, I'll take it. You're going to love it. It's yeah. such a fun game. Such a fun game. I've never played it. I've seen it though. I've never played it. It's probably in your collection, buried under all the other games you have. <laughs> yeah, it's what I use to 
as a kickstand for Legend of Zagor and Dark World. Woo! Throwing that hate. Throwing that hate. Well, we don't all have rich people problems like Bernardo. So, Luke, go ahead. What is your number five? I've got two honorable mentions, if that's all right. This is cheating. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you've mentioned number sixes and all this, but that's okay. True. So, first one, it's 3D game. It's been around since the 60s. Mousetrap. I see Mousetrap in every charity shop I go to. Uh, depending on which one you want, you know, which version you're talking about, it could be the vintage version with the cage dropping down, or it could be the new version with the washing machine and different traps on the board. But every shop I go in is Mousetrap. There's always a copy of Mousetrap there. Now, I don't know whether it's because it's popular or whether it's because people get fed up of waiting to get that mouse under the cage and they get rid of it. Um, but yeah, I see Mousetrap a lot. Uh, another really cheap one is Busy Buzzy Bumbles. I don't know if you've played this one, but it's a Waddington's game. This this is a fantastic drunk game. <laughs> <laughs> so I have innocent childhood memories of that one. <laughs> wow, drinking when you were a kid. That's an, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called again? Busy Buzzy Bumbles. Oh, yeah, okay, I that's, see. In the, okay, that's the Waddington talking. one in the catalog. So you've got there's like this um, board in the middle. It's like a plate on a weeble wobble, and it's filled with these magnetic balls. Um, and the aim of the game is to basically get your colored balls out of the weeble wobble. But you've got a headband with a B with a magnet on the underside of it, mm. and you're nutting like that into Bobble the board head. to pick these balls no, out. No, the balls, huh? It's so funny. Like, it's hilarious. It's one of these games where you stop for a moment and look around at what your friends are doing. Like, we must be absolutely out of our minds playing this, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that game, go that game is really cheap to pick up uh, and it's still a lot of fun. But number five, it's got to be Ready, Gets Ready Set Spaghetti. Mm -hmm. This game, I got. And it still goes for around about 10 to 15 pounds. And it is worth worth so much more than that. It's such a fantastic game. Um, there are reprints out. There's a really, really shitty copy uh, called, um, I think it's called Sp Spaghetti Scramble. And it's made with such naff cheap components. Don't bother with it. Get the original. It's worth paying that little bit more to get an original copy. And like I said, it's still cheap. And it's still one of my ultimate favorite games. I just played that with my wife, not but uh, maybe two weeks ago. And she looked at me, she went, I like this game. I was like, I know you do. <laughs> she really loved it. That is a fun one. All right, Mark, what's number five? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I guess, since we're breaking all the rules here. <laughs> the last one I've got here is one that's arguably vintage um it's just on the wrong side of the 90s decade border but it is uh it's one that i'm sure all of you will have played it's one that i know matt does like um it's celebrating wow. its 20th really? anniversary this year oh look at that <laughs> yeah Somebody's first edition I'm going to say it's vintage, 20 years old now. First edition. <laughs> Love it. He has to You're emphasize not. the first edition. Do you have any other editions, Mark? I've got first edition, second edition, and third edition. Um, and up to number six expansion, I think. Um, haven't got any further past that. I saw just today, I only found out today, there's a PG version as well. Yeah, it's not now. Nah, don't you, you want you want the gross out cards? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah th this is uh, th obviously this, that's the board game that got me into games. It's not cheating, Mark, because I looked it up. eBay came out in two thousand one, so it is twenty years old mm -hmm. as well. So I'll I'll allow that one. Plus, I absolutely love that game. That was the game that got me into it. I do buy all the expansions. I am part of that Kickstarter, as is Bernardo. We're getting our own cards for the next one. Um, I have a card for Zombies 13, what was the, the, whatever the last one was, Vegas, that came out. My wife and my kids are there, and my two little girls will be featured on the next one. 
I, I have to pay a little bit extra for it, but because it's a game that, you know, got me into board games, I have, I, I just feel like I have to get it. Uh, so every time they bring out another expansion, it's hit or miss on some of the later expansions, but it, to me, yeah, it's roll and move play cards, right? Yeah. But the expansions do change it up here and there. And it's just a fun game. It's a fun game. Get seven if you can. Seven's usually everyone's favorite. I can't believe it's 20 years old. Yeah. yeah. That's why they came out the Kickstarter, the 20th anniversary edition. Which well, when, you say, when you say it was 20 years old, like my brain automatically goes, oh, 20 years old, so like the 80s. Like, no. <laughs> It's <laughs> and old look, we're getting old. I know it's horrible. Now, I remember oh, yeah. buying that game brand new. <laughs> I they're getting so old, Azraval. Look at these guys. They just, you know, not like us, not like us young guys here. Let me tell you. Let me let me ask now 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 that we're getting into the just the um what what can I say? Just like the honorable mentions. I want to say roller coaster tycoon. It doesn't, it's not the best looking one, but it plays really well, I think. Just, you know, buy, bidding the rides. I wish everything was a blind bid, too, in my opinion, but that game is a lot of fun. Go ahead. There's one copy on eBay at the moment, and it's 80 quid over here. What? No, I got it for like a buck. I, I'm, I'm such a huge fan of like the 2D video games, like Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2 fantastic video games i've lost mm -hmm. months of my life to those but so i, I, I want to play the board game but i ain't paying that much for it no i wouldn't pay that much for it I, I love it though it's so much fun every time i play it's a lot of fun um mm -hmm. i wanted to ask if uh because one of the ones that you got me in on luke was pro action football the soccer game is that yeah. cheap in the uk is that a no um because I'll be honest, I forget love that game, and I hate soccer. Twenty to twenty-five, um, okay. it is cheaper than what Sabutio is like. If you're going after vintage Sabutio, I mean, there's a huge collector's market for Sabutio, massive. Because um, it's one of those games. Which I think it's is Sabutio Waddington's. I think it could be. I don't know. Maybe. Um, Maybe. Yeah. Um, that that goes for a lot more Sabutio than than Pro Action, but with Pro Action, the the vintage ones tend to go like like my copy, which is Pro Action. They tend to go for a little bit more in total oh. action. Um, that that's round about twelve pounds. Okay, twelve. Well, still, like I said, that's a good one. My wife enjoys the Ziggy game, a day with Ziggy. It it uses the. Uh, uh, mechanic from Camel Up or Camel Cup or whatever, where your pawn can fit on top of another pawn and move whenever that pawn moves too. And I'm wondering whoever came up with Camel Cup used to play that game, and that's how they got that neat little mechanic because it is fun for the Ziggy game. Another one is a it's called Crocodile Hunter. It's a reskin of a very expensive game called Freddy Cats. Don't get Freddy Cats. Get Crocodile Hunter because it's much mm -hmm. more dramatic. I would be way more scared of a crocodile. Than a bulldog barking at me um because a bulldog not not that i would ever do it but if one came at me i can kick a bulldog i couldn't <laughs> kick a crocodile you know Jeez. i'm you just i'm not saying i kick dogs i'm just saying i'm not afraid <laughs> because you can kick them and then they'll go away a crocodile if you're going to swing for the kick you're going to lose a limb okay how I, you know they're how you know they're going to go away man not that <laughs> it's funny because I, I took my girls to the zoo and the crocodile swam over to my little girl as I was holding her. And then as I moved to the other uh, side of the pen, it swam over with us too. And I was like, huh, I don't know if she's <laughs> entertained or slightly worried. It's going, Hey, kid, Hey, Hey dude, you're going to throw that baby in here. Throw that baby in here. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because the lion had the same idea. It was, it was pawing at my girls against the, uh, the, the window. It kept trying to get to them. I was like, my girls are sitting there just eating their little fruit loops. Just going, Hey, I was like, yeah, you, you girls look like it's time to these to that lion. But um, I, I think I think that game is uh, a, a lot of fun uh, too. Crocodile Hunter. That's a, it's a cheap version of it. it. Does anyone else? I mean, there is a, a new edition of a game called Jumping Monkeys, which is just a flick 'em up game or uh, trying to grab onto a tree. 
Oh, that was around for ages. Yeah. It's silly fun, and you can get a cheap – I got a cheap little copy for like eight bucks on Amazon, and my nephews and I, we just love – I played that a few weeks ago, too. You're just laughing the whole time, flicking monkeys on the tree, you know, bumping other people's monkeys off. It's just, That's a cheap game, too. Any, any other ones anyone else wants to mention? Um, my, 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 oh. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, my yeah. two honorable mentions were one was Vampire Hunter. The other one that missed my list was uh, The Grape Escape. It's another Play-Doh game. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. That's one that uh, I think, Luke, you did a review on it too, right? You did a. Oh, yeah. 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 Where, where I like how it's slow motion you're showing the grapes getting killed. Uh, just brutal, brutalized here, but it's okay. It's fruit. We kill fruit all the time. So, <laughs> a- anyone else with some honorable mentions? I mean, Mark just gave us three picks in, as one of them one time. So, I mean, I say is- pop up pirate. Like I see pop up pirate on eBay really cheap, but then again, the game's still being made, so there's plenty of copies around. You know, it's it's not like um, like some vintage games like. Like the really expensive ones, like Forbidden Bridge and Tornado Rex, they're the ones which have only got maybe like a a, a year window release. Uh, but games where they've been constantly produced, those are the ones which are really cheap. Yeah, I find like if you're going to get Pop Up Pirate, though, get the original, the 1987 version. Yeah, I did. Yeah. A- yeah, I did a review. That's that's the one with um, Baby Spice on the front cover. As the the little girl on the front cover is Emma Bunton, Baby Spice. Oh no! So I, I got the it might have been the late nineties one. It's just around the corner here. Hang on a second. Mine, yeah, it's right at the bottom there. Um, mine's the mine's the racist one with uh, racist stereotype oh, oh. on the bottom. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There you go. I, I like uh, Crocodile Dennis is another one I forgot to mention. You can get that game for super cheap or a different version of it. You're just punching in teeth and it's going to eventually clamp down. My little nephews, my little girls, they don't even know how to play that game. One of them, she, she, her finger goes like this and then when it gets to the tooth, she does this. That's how she plays the game. Like, mm. she, <laughs> She's scared when it comes down, but we play that. Okay, let's see the box. Oh, I got it. Sorry. Oh, I, thought you were get, I thought you were getting it. I'm sorry. That's, That's right. why he was talking. That's why I was running my mouth. I was, I was, I was covered. It for hang on, hang on. So, um, yeah, um, Crocodile Hunter. I don't know whether you. I told you this, Matt. I used to have the original, the original Parker version, and you didn't push the teeth in. You actually ripped them out of the mouth. You had a pair of tweezers, and you pulled the teeth out. Like, oh gosh. yeah, it was, it was great. Wow. Yeah, I'd get him snapping at you. Yeah, pushing the teeth in, I think it's some even my wife gets scared playing that game. So yeah, that's that's the pop-up pirate I've got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't think that there would pass any uh, sort of no. oh god not today. <laughs> no. Not today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's but, bad. That's problematic. But, uh, the, there is an older version than that, and the older version is actually better. Uh, the the older version, which does have Emma Bunt and Baby Spice from Pop Up from Pop Up Pirate from Spice Girls, um, as a kid as the model on the front cover. Um, but the mechanism for that one is completely different to the one that Luke's got, and the one that all the ones since the one that Luke's got have been made using. The mechanism's completely different inside the barrel on the original older one. It's a much better one. It's completely random, um, and it's got, like, two spring bits that you need to press in, and it rotates inside, so it randomizes it and stuff. So it's much harder to actually guess which one it's going to be that sets it off, whereas the new ones are just cheap, shoddy rubbish, basically. I do have another pop-up pirate. I have the Star Wars one. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> you have a little Darth Vader. <laughs> it has audio. That's amazing. And your swords are lightsabers. Oh. There you go. Look at that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh. Wow. <laughs> instantly. Instantly. Pop up Vader. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So there you go, folks. There, there are some affordable games. We've listed you a plethora of affordable games, and I can't wait for all the prices of Heartthrob to just soar in value now because we have revealed them to you. No, I don't think any of these games are in, in threat of ever rising in extreme value because they're they've all they've been out there. People know about them. People just pass them up because they don't think they're that good. But remember, just because a game is cheap to get doesn't mean it's not an excellent game. Um, I want to thank all my guests here for coming on, folks. We will see you next time on another Vintage Voltron.